Okay, I'll start the recording. So to start the rational method of um, design, we have prepared a table like this. And that table is already in our material, uh, which I have shared with us, rational sheets. You open it before the end of the class, I'm gonna see us, show us how we can download a lot of this sheet online. You can download a lot online and you can use them. Just download one and customize it. But today we are trying to build one from scratch. So this is the area and that area is in hectares. Okay, then the next, column will be the flow, wastewater flow, eh? known as Q. Wastewater flow known as Q. And the unit will be in meter cube per second or liter, but let's use liter per seconds. To the smallest units you can, you can obtain. So, so ideally, I should insert slope here, okay? Slope, okay? And of course, slope is, uh, is unitless. It doesn't have units. So some people will say in meters. Meters over meters. Okay, so this minus this over this will give you this. So this one becomes five now. So it means this one becomes six. This one becomes seven. And so on and so forth. So here, this is the flow, this is the area. Um, no, this is um, summation, aggregated area, summation of area. Also in head. So area. So this is 
small q, this is big q, just take note. Mm -hmm. Now, so here we're gonna fill in the whole, the starting point and the end point of the manhole position or the beginning of the pipe and the end of the pipe. Or the coordinates at the beginning of the pipe and the coordinate at the end of the pipe. And then the, the distance. So if we come here now, for instance, if you look at my chart here now, let me just show you point to one difference. This is the length. Look at the length of the pipe. You see where they placed it. But I just decided to place my own here. So and look at the slope they got. Look at their slope. OK, this is the slope. So they place the slope here. Me, I just took my mind and I placed it at the beginning. So the whole concept for you to understand how it is done, and then you can decide to customize your chart. This is not a standard, a standard. There's no standard. You're a consultant. You can decide to do your own the way you want it. You can decide to place uh, the coordinate. You can decide to eliminate the coordinate and just put the pipe and then put the slope. You measure the slope on your own. You don't want to show anybody how you got it and everything. So this is, this chart is in a in a exhaustive. That's why. I wanted to go online and download many, as many charts as possible for you to see that there are thousands of it out, out there. And you can also build one from scratch. So today we'll build one from scratch and we're trying to customize it. So these are the pipe numbers. This is the start and this is the end. Now this is the length, okay? And this is the slope. So I can decide. So just take a look at this chart again. Open open the file so that you can be looking at it on your screen. Um, under urban design lectures, then you go to rational method. Open the rational method, and then you see a chart of rational method. You open it. So I've opened two PDFs, chart of rational method and the rational method. Open the two. So back to my Excel. So here now, the beginning node here is 2.3. The end node here is 2.2, for instance. And the length of pipe one is 500. So the slope will now be, um, okay. What they did here now, they gave us the slope. They gave us the slope themselves. The slope is there. If you look at the second chart, look at it. The slope has been given to us. So there's no need for this calculation again. So it's going to be this over this. This over this. So the slope is one in 200, meaning every, every 200 units, you lose one unit. Every 200 units, you lose one unit. So that's easy for us. So what we now do is we said, um, the slope here is one in 200, which is um, equal to one over 200. This is the slope. Mm -hmm. Here is 2.2, but let's finish this one. The area is 15 hectares, 15.63 hectares, I guess. Yeah, that is, the, that is this area. This area, A, look at the boundary of A. Is 15.3 hectares. So the, po the point now is what is it contributing? What flow is coming from that catchment coming to conduit A, coming to pipe A? What is the flow pipe A is expected to carry? Okay, so this is it. So you stop there. So we'll do the second one. The second one is 2.2 and it's 2.1. And the length is 250. And the slope is one over 300. So let me change this to two decimal place. I'll right click on it. I'll highlight all of them. Format cell. 
I'll go to numbers and I will say two decimal place. Okay, okay, it's, it's not enough. So let me make it two decimal place. Numbers, two decimal place. Okay, go. Why is this one doing like this? It was one divided by 200. Okay. So the what is the area of catchment B? 5.47. Catchment C, 2.11. Remember what I said? Ideally, what will be here will be coordinates. Could, so that means these two value will be given to you by the surveyor. So they can easily read out the slope yourself, 500. And the slope is one over 300. So for those of us that are just joining us, we are trying to replicate this chart. These are charts. These are final charts, okay? Okay, um, this, that's, what they did here was they used numbers to number 0.1 to 0.2. What I said in our own charts, we should use the surveyor's points. So the slope we're getting here now is counters this. This is a different convention they use, but I'm telling you the modern convention you have to use. So here, they just not named it. Based on the autocad they have, they name here 2.3, here 2.2. But this is not the actual coordinates. What I'm saying, if you use the actual coordinate from the surveyor, it will be easy for you to read out the slope by subtracting this from this and dividing by the length, it will give you the slope. So ignore this one. So this one is just as an annotation. This one is just a designation, a, an annotation, that's the right word, notation. It's just a notation. If you say this minus this over this, you will get it wrong, but in your own, let this place be the S code, the coordinate, the elevation of this place, Okay, let me, let me help you. Let me do it this way. Let me match center here. Sorry. Match center. And I'll put it elevation. So this place, start elevation, end elevation. Then this place is length. So slope from our Pythagoras theory, start elevation minus end elevation over the length will give you the slope I demonstrated yesterday. Okay, so now the third one now C is equal to one over three hundred. Somebody is not muting a mic, please. So um, so the area of C, the area of you can mute your mic and continue talking. There's no problem, but mute it. Point zero six. Okay. Number D. So let me be a bit fast. So we can move fast. You said? So let's continue. So the, the D is 250, the length of the pipe, the length of the section. It's not necessarily the length of the pipe, it's a section. So it's going to be a combination of a one kilometer pipe, whatever. But well, this is just the length of the section. Please, as I'm doing this thing, just be trying to be looking at this place and be seeing what we're doing to add a lot of value. Yeah, I can permit you to record. If you can record, let me see if I can give you the permission. What is being recorded, it will be sent to you. Allow to record local files. Okay, I've allowed you to record. Okay, let's continue. So now, this is what we're doing. So we're we are on, we on catchment D now. So this is catchment D. Look at it, you can see that it's very small, okay? So the slope for catchment D is one over 400. And the area is 3.91 hectares. 
E. E is 500 meters in length. And the slope is one over 500. And the area of E is 14.84. F is two and three. And the distance, the catchment length, the pipe length is 250. And the slope is one in 500. And the area, catchment area is, is, is serving or it's collecting waste from is 4.96. That can also be, you know, in your own, this can be number of houses. By then you must have gotten the unit value coming from one house. If this place is a built up area now, that has three bedroom duplexes, okay? I can now calculate 10 persons in one house or 20 persons in one house by their number, by their population equivalent, which is 20, by their water demand per person, by the safety factor. I'll get a unit value. Then when I now multiply that unit value by the number of houses, I'll get the, pipe, the house, number of houses connected to that pipe. I'm trying to use every different way to explain this thing so that it will so be easy for us and we can grasp it very well. It's very simple to understand. And the length is 500. And the slope is one in 300. Finally, we have H. H, the length is 125. The slope is one in 600. And it is on the one to five. Maybe the graph will get fourteen point zero six. Five. So we have done this. Now, okay. Now I want you to pay very attention. Now, pay very, very, very good attention. Let me explain a basic concept in engineering. This concept I'm gonna to explain to you now, if you're a civil engineer, it is called the law of continuity. If you're an electrical engineer, it is called Kirchhoff's law. If you are a chemical engineer, it is a, is a continuity equation. Um, whatever engineering you are, this thing affects you. Now, what is that thing? This is it. If there's a flow here now in catchment A, when this flu fl fluid flows through here and comes here, it will aggregate A plus B. When it comes to D, it will aggregate C plus B. It's a current flow, it's a current law. It's also called law of continuity, which means in law of continuity, this is how we put it. We say that A1, we say that A1 eh, times B2, B1 plus A2, B2. If, if they are in a balance equation, if, no, if they are in, a, in an equilibrium, yes, if they are in equilibrium, must be equal to A times B. This is called the law of continuity. It's called the continuity equation. It's also a current law. As the current is coming down, is aggregating. So I want you to understand. If you don't understand this, forget it. You will not understand everything I'm saying now. So here now, the, 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 the flow of water at point F will be the flow that is coming from here plus the flow from here plus the flow from here plus the flow from E. But the flow from C does not have any upstream. So it's just on its own until it enters junction D. The same thing applies in water reticulation. 
as you are coming from the reservoir tank going downwards, the pipe sizes are reducing. Why? Because as the water is branching off, the residual flow is decreasing. So I normally tell people that waste water is the reverse of okay. potable water. In the case of potable water, water is coming from a tank, a reservoir tank, and going to the consumer. In the case of a treatment plant, it is coming from the consumer to the treatment plant. So but they all follow the same principle of aggregation. So that is why in our second column here now, I put summation of A. Summation of A, because A is the, is the determining factor for the flow. If there's any question, please ask me. So here, the summation of A here, the area of A is 15, is the same number, 15.63. But when it comes to B, it becomes equal to A plus B. But for C, C does not have upstream, uh, upstream. So C becomes C. You're looking at your chart. You're looking at this while I'm doing this, probably, if you have printed this. At this point, all the discharge here and all the discharge of B are here. When you come to this place, it becomes the discharge of C plus the discharge of B. So while we are in D now, D becomes A plus B plus, B. plus, B plus B. itself. <laughs> Let me see if that works. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's the same thing. Okay. Okay. Let me let me let me what we'll do now is um before we do this one, it's the same thing, but let me show you some what they did here. So that you need discharge. Okay. Um, how do I put it now? Let me, let me, let's continue. I, don't, I want it to be the same with that one, but what they did is the same. What we're doing is what they did, but I also show you that what I need to do here now is just to put the, you need this. Okay, let's continue. We're in order, continue. So E now, E, this is E now, sorry, it's here. See where E is. So E is on its own. So there's no upstream. So E is equal to E. F, this is F. F is now D plus E is equal to F. D plus E is equal to F. But I can also say it is A plus B plus C plus D plus F. But I shouldn't bother myself with A, B, C, and E because A, C, and B has already been included in D. So F will simply become D plus E. Okay, equal to F is E plus D. How about G? This is G. G is on its own. So G will just be B itself. And then finally, H. H will now be F plus G. H is now. F plus G. 
And now the unit discharge we got yesterday, and let me rephrase how we got unit discharge, please. Very, very important. So I have it open already. This is how we got the unit discharge. This unit discharge is what is the flow, wastewater flow per, per hectare, which is also, are we not supposed to add 4.96 to elf? Okay, let me check. Okay, yeah, we're supposed to. Lost itself. Thank you, sir. Yeah, very, very good observation. Because itself, it, it's on catchment. It's on catchment. So in that event, it means H also, we have to add itself. Oh, that's a good observation. Good. So um, it, what he just did now is superb. You have to add yourself. After you add your upstream, you still have to add yourself. Good. So this is how we got the dry weather flow. Dry weather flow is the waste water flow when there is no storm event, when there is no rain. So when there is no rain, the waste water flow is exactly the waste water coming from the houses or coming from the catchments. It means there is no interference. It means that is the accurate production of waste water from the houses. Okay. When there's no storm, that's what we call it dry weather flow. I mean, this is the base flow. This is the normal flow of people. Let me use the word. People is creating, using their kitchen, using their bedrooms, using their toilet and everything. This is the normal wastewater they're generating. And we talked about yesterday about garbage in is garbage out. Law of continuity. What goes in is what goes, goes out. So the amount of water you are, you are drinking, we are expected to produce the equivalent amount of wastewater. So that's the, base, that's the baseline. That's like, they, we use that as a benchmark to determine wastewater production per human being. And I told us yesterday, I said in Germany, what they do is that as they are charging you for drinking water, they're telling you for wastewater because they know that come what may you produce that water they're giving you as waste. So you just pay the same thing at the same time. And that's why they use it to service and maintain their wastewater treatment plants. So nobody charges you wastewater treatment, waste, money for wastewater in Germany, but they charge you for drinking water, but they will multiply by two. So here now we said the water demand per person is 130 liters. And the population density based on the land use, based on number of houses per plot per hectare is 100 persons per hectare, which I proved to us yesterday that this is equivalent to 10 people per 1,000 square meters because one hectare is 10,000 square meters. So it means a plot of land, depending on why you, what, your, what is your plot of land, you're expecting it to have 10 persons. So this S is 400, is the conversion, converting day to seconds. These two here is our peak factor, safety factor. And this 0 0.1 here now is for what we call parasite water, infiltration water, unaccounted water. Is a second level, a second tier safety factor we are providing. And these things are just what, was, what is provided in some standards just to make sure that infiltration water is being captured, that some extra water that, that unaccounted for are also captured in the calculation. And we said, when you calculate all these things together, you are going to get 0 0.410. What this value means is that in every one hectare of land, this is the expected flow of wastewater per second. And it makes a lot of sense. It means for this 100 capita per hectare of people, okay? that the wastewater generate, they, they are generating per hectare is 0 0.41. So all we need to do is just to come here and we fill it to 0 0.401 and then draw down the Excel for it to fill it up. Therefore, the wastewater flow, which we know, let me also put one column here so that it will be giving us idea. Yes, so this place is Q equal to CIA. Hmm? Okay. Well, in this case, be careful. Our eye has been taken care of inside here. Hmm? Take note. Our eye has been taken care of inside here. Or using this formula, Q is equal to 
small q, sorry, small q times a. These are small q. Hmm? And these are a. A. Hmm? So this my small q is equal to um of course i've said how it is it will be another small q times um two times the water demand I'm just trying to give you, i'm just trying to provide q q Clue, sorry, I'm trying to provide clue to how we are. This is population equivalent multiplied by two. Instead of removing two, let me just put SF, safety factor, which we call peak factor. We call it peak factor in sewer design or water design, water reticulation design. Then we call it uh, runoff coefficient in storm design. We call it runoff coefficient in storm design. We call it peak factor in Siwa design, which is also the reverse. Siwa design is the reverse of water, whatever water design, drinking water design. Take notes. So here now, it just be equal to this multiply by this. And I drag it down. So this is how we got this one. This is how they got this. If you scroll down to point H, you will see something like 30.07. So I did what I, what they did, what, I, what we did here is what I just did, but I'm, I'm trying to justify the fact that you can customize your sheet, but the principle is the same. The methodology might be different, but the end result is the same. So this is my end result. So I can say convert it to two decimal place. Format cell. Numbers to this map place. So this is it. So any question so far? Any question so far? Now, if this, let, I don't want us to be confused. You see this aggregation they did here. This aggregation we did on this chart here now is that we multiplied the discharge by this before we started to aggregate. That's why you, you saw, it's as if it's different from mine. So this one now, the aggregation took place here, but in my own case, aggregation is taking place here because I will need the area also to multiply by the precipitation to get the area for my storm water. So the limiting, the, 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 the determinant is the area it's serving, the area that the wastewater or the storm water is coming from. So, but the good thing is that the value you are seeing here is also the value I'm seeing. Here. So in this case now, if I want to get this in now, I can also come here and I will, um, I can aggregate flow. I can get the individual flow by multiplying this times this. No, this times this. This times this. Okay, let me do it here and just show you. Don't worry, we're in order. We've gotten what we want. So here, you know, we have um, here we have um unit discharge. So if I say equal to, watch me now. This multiply by this. Hmm? Enter. And I draw it down. Mm -hmm. Then I now aggregate it. So you can use okay. Let me let me just do it for, for learning purpose. But we've gotten we've gotten what, we want, what, we, what we've done. This is the final result. But I wanted to show you that we can also get this here. So now let's aggregate the flow. So this one is equal to itself.
So the flow in A is 6.25. The flow in B is 2.26 or there. Therefore, A plus, at this point, we'll now say A plus B. Okay? So this one will now be equal to the value of A plus the value of B. which is this. The value of C will be itself, which is this. The value of D will be B plus C plus itself. Okay, there's a difference. So what's causing the difference? So um, that means when I was doing this one, when I was doing this one, I said D is um, C plus D plus itself. Okay. So there's a difference between these two and there's not meant to be different. So I'll, I'll, I'll track it now. C it itself, B is A plus B. Um, I nine A plus B Okay. Okay. Okay, let, 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 let me do E. E is E is itself. How about F? F will be D plus E plus itself. Okay, small figure is missing, but I'll get it. G is on its own, so G will be it, it on itself. Finally, somebody just in something coming up. So finally, G will now be H now be um, F plus G plus itself. So having thirty point one here, thirty point seven now. So I'll get I'll I'll. I'll figure out where the difference. Okay, you use A plus B plus itself for D. Okay, yeah, use A. Let's go to the chart and know what's, what's causing the problem. And we use, okay, A plus B plus itself. Okay, okay, here. We use A plus B for D. No, D should be, D should just be B plus C plus itself. B plus C plus itself, that's the value of D. So let's go back and check. Um, D. So is equal to B plus C plus itself good so here and then will be equal to b plus uh -uh. No. there will be b plus C plus itself. Good, we solved it. So um, what is causing the error was I use 14.06 instead of 14.01. Okay, that was all we have that uh, difference of 0 0.7. I, I went and used um, to, to the, the area summation of point D 
should be B plus C. But this is not B plus C, so it should be this. Okay. Okay. Now I understand. Now I understand. This is where the error is coming from. I will change this to two decimal place. Sorry, we're learning. This is back to normal. If I change this one to two decimal place now, it will give me 30.08. So let's try it now. Good. So, you know, um, what I will let's tell people, you know. So this one now, let's, 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 um, um, for myself. Okay, so this is summation of area. Um, here will now be, This will not be, um, just hold on. This is flow, this is Q. This is also flow, yeah? And it's also Q, okay? For this Q, then this one will not be. Flow, this is summation of Q. This is the Q per unit. Please, if you are confused anyway, let me know. I'm just trying to demonstrate um, the flexibility in this design. You can use any method. You can. You, you are so free. So this is it. So Any questions so far? If there's no question, we'll continue. Please just look at what we've done so far. So you can label it, you can color it, you can, you know, you can make it look like um, something that, um, you know, you know, uh, somebody will admire us. Okay, okay, this is cool, blah, blah, blah. But all those things are just, um, they don't, do anything. So this is where we are. And by the way, we are doing here, let me mark center and say Siwa design. Siwa network. We are designing two things. We're designing the Siwa network, also designing. So we are starting with the Siwa network. So at this point, we can now dimension. So we can now get our diameter. Diameter of the pipe. And the diameter of the pipe would be D. Okay. And this D is a function of the slope. The flow and the roughness. And that will be chart. Mm -hmm. So you look up in your chart, take a chart with a known frictional factor. You now check the discharge, this discharge here against the slope. That will give you the size of the pipe and that is our end game so let's go to our chart then so let's go to our materials and go to nomogram so using concrete pipe so we can use this one so 
So this is the chart. Today, when I was when I was um, just browsing the internet, I also saw one other chart. And um, I will also introduce us to that chart. I just Google online, but this one is one I we have we've been using for many years now. So how do you use this chart? On the horizontal axis, you have your flow. One liter per second, two liter, three liter, four liter, 20. When it gets to this place, it increases to 10. It's just the same unit. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, 200, 400, and so on until you get to 100 meter cube per second. That is the limit you can design. So the first one, what do we have? What is the size of pipe A? Pipe A has a discharge of um, 2 units in liter per seconds, liter per seconds. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the place to put it. So when we go to our chart now, This chart is in flow in meter per seconds or liter per second. Meter per seconds and liter per seconds are the same thing. Why you are seeing this here is that if you recall, 1,000 liters is equal to one meter cube. So here you see 1,000. The next thing you see is 2,000. So these two here is actually 2,000 liters per second, which is now meter cube per second. On the horizontal axis, on the vertical axis, you have the slope in per mil per thousand. Okay. So this is the slope in per thousand. But the slope we are given, we are given that the slope here is one in 200. So we are not asking to get what would be the slope in one per thousand in one kilometer. So what you do, you multiply that value by a thousand. So this is one in, let, 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 let's, let's get it right. The question say, the slope in one in 200 is this. So one in thousand, means you multiply whatever you get by a factor of 10. So here now, this is the slope. So this slope now, I can create a value here and insert. So this slope here now becomes equal to this multiply by a thousand. So this value now becomes five per mil. So this is what you're going to read off in the charts. So I can as well um, I can as well. So this is per mil. So this is, I don't know how to write this, zero over zero, zero. So this is the slope. Hmm?
this is a symbol. I mean, the idea is a thousand. I don't know how to write it. Okay, let's just leave it. I don't know what to write here for us. Any question? So these two, So, so now let's go to the chat now. We go to the chat now. So this is my six, six point two, which is somewhere in the middle here. So I'll read it against five percent, five per mil. I'll go to six here for the center between six and seven, and I'll go to where it it meets five. Is here. It 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 is at exactly one two is here. And here is between 100 and 125 mm. So I'll choose the biggest one. The bigger one is 125. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Sorry, please. Do you mind taking that slope again? The one we showed 200 that gave us five. That was multiplied no. by 1,000. Yes, this is what I did. Um, the chart we're using is calibrated in Pamil. So in the, the other time we used it, if, the, if somebody gives you a slope and say the slope is in percentage, you know, percentage is multiplied by 100. Per mean is multiplied by 1,000. So per mean in this case now will be multiplied by 1,000, but if the slope is given to you in percentage, you multiply by 10. Now, if somebody comes down and say that the slope is 2.5, Percent. Uh oh. If somebody comes now, I don't know which. Okay, I'm not formatted this cell. If somebody comes here now, and say this is the, my slope is zero point five percent. Is the same thing as five per thousand. I don't know how to write per thousand. These two are the same. These two values are the same. I don't know how to put it to you. But in engineering, there's, oh, if, 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 if I don't know how to say, units, tens, hundreds, or percents, thousand, 10,000. 10,000 is hectare. Thousand is per thousand, hundred is percent, and so on and so forth. I wish there's a better way to explain this thing. But what we did here is basically we multiply the value here by one thousand. We multiply this thing because of the chart we're using. You know, every chart has its own standard, has a way of using it. So this is the way you use this chart. There's a chart I downloaded today. Let me just show us. Let me digress a bit. The chart says that um, boy, I put that chart. Okay, let me leave it. Okay, oh, good, good. Okay, Loretta, good, good. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so this is it now. So I'll go to my chart for this one now. I want everybody to open your chart so that you, you I just want you to understand how to read this because this is the high point of the training for you to be able to read off your diameter of your pipe. So here is 6.2. Well, let's just assume six, okay? I'll take it until I get to five. This is 5%, look at 5%, look at it. Five per mil, not 5%, sorry. Five per mil, five per mil. So I'll read it here, I'll come to six. It will be between 100 mm and one to five mm. But I told us in infrastructure design, it's better to over-design than to under-design. Take note of it, especially when it comes to pipe network. 
Because once you design the wrong pipe network and they dig two meter deep or one meter deep and lay pipe, I wonder how in the world you want to remove that pipe and recover that pipe. So if you have designed it and, and, and underdesigned it, you are a mess. You'll be in a mess. But if you have designed it, it will work. Only that the lifespan will be extended. So if, if, like I uh, last two months, somebody gave me a design of a medical school in Osun State. I don't know what they call it, one new medical school. He was designing for either for 12,000 population equivalent of students for 15 years. I advised him, I said, look, don't design anything less than 25 years. So we, when we calibrated for 25 years, it was giving us 15,000 students. Once you don't, look, he was giving us 9,000 students, medical college in the next 15 years, that the student population will grow from what it is today to about 9,000 in 15 years. I advised him, I said, do for 25 years. So when we do the mathematics, the calculation and everything, we are getting that in 25 years, the population will increase to 15,000. And finally, that was 15,000 we used to do the design. But me know that that design can last for 40, 50 years. Because at the end of the day, this 100 mm and 125 mm will make a huge difference. So the idea is that if you're doing for infrastructure design, you don't design for today. When you get your population equivalent, you, if somebody says you should do a design, a dam, a water reticulation system, a sewage treatment plant, a water treatment plant, you ask the person, what is the lifespan of this thing we're designing? Or what is the, what is the design horizon? horizon? Or you say, what is the lifespan? Or what is the expected lifespan? Okay, the person will say 50 years. You will now use population factor. In Nigeria, it's about 4%. And calculate and say, what will be the population of this area in 50 years? That is the number you're going to use. You're not going to use the number of today. And in using that population, you must have included future development, future growth, dynamics in population movement and all the English grammar you can speak or all the foreseeable variation you can see. But the, 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 the home point is that don't use the population of today, use the population of the lifespan. People that design Abuja, design Abuja to last for 25 years at the initial time, either 25 or 50 years, I can't remember. So when, when they designed Abuja in 1978, when the design started, until they moved in in 1990. They knew that in 25 years time, the population of area um, of phase one of Abuja will be 1 million population equivalent. But then Abuja was a bush, like a typical bush. It, Abuja was a virgin land. Abuja is one of the capitals in the world that, that was started from the scratch. And that's why when I see people abusing it, I feel bad because we have the opportunity to make it the best city in the world because there was no house. It was a virgin Gwari, uh, Gwari land that is so, so clean, that is in the middle of nowhere. So the design was like, everything was put in place perfectly. Only that, uh, we don't know what's happening now, that's by the way. So the point I want you to take home, which is very, very important is that when you are designing a dam, water infrastructure, any infrastructure, you design based on the expected lifespan. And if it's something that involves population, you must extrapolate that population to that end lifespan. So the idea is that if after 50 years, your design is still working, good for them. If it fails, it's not your fault because the design is not meant to last forever. That's why it is like Dr. Lion. Dr. Lion can last for 100 years. So if you use a good Dr. Lion, to design your, your system, then you are good to go. I'm not even sure that PVC can even last for more than 50 years, except the new ones now. Of course, all of you know that the PVC technology have been changing every day. Today we have PPR and they are improving, they're increasing in value. So they are, their ability to last longer, but then you must place a design um, period on your design. You must pin it to a, 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 an expected lifespan. Okay, so um, having done that one, we'll do the next one. So this one, the diameter is one, two, five millimeters. We'll go to the second one, eight. 
So this is eight here. I'll read on eight. What is the slope? The slope is 3%, 3% 3 per mil, sorry, which is 0.3%. Mm -hmm. So that, let me put this so that someone will not get confused. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. This is 0.5%. Uh, I've matted that cell. So what I will do now is this, just hold on. I'll copy this. I'll paste it here. Then oh, sorry. I'll highlight it. I'll format it. I'll go to percentage. So in percentage is this. In Pamil, is this? I think that's understandable. It's better now. Some of us will get it better now. For myself. To the smart place, or even on the smart place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second one is 3% or 3.3%. So, and it's 8 point something. So, this is 8. I'll go to 8 and I'll read it against 3. It's giving me 150 mm. So, this one will be 150 mm. This one, if I'm smart, if I'm smart, I'll just put the value for this one, this one now, because anything that, if one, two, five can conduct a flow of 6.25, 2, 6.27 liter per second, then it can also conduct the flow of 5.64. But before I do that, let me not be too lazy. Let me first of all check what 5.24 against, what's the slope again? The slope is 3.3%. So this is eight, sorry, five, and against 3%. So it's giving 1.25, it's the same thing. Are we together? So technically this one will just be this. Don't need to waste my time. This one will just be this. So I know I only have this 15 to design. So in designing 15 now. Okay, no. Oh well, yeah, let's do. Everybody get me and put in the chat box. What is the pipe size for 15 against a slope of 2.5 per mil, which is which is also 0.25%. Oh well, yeah, everybody, 15, 23.5. And 30.8. Solve it. So, so let me know you understand what, I, what I've been doing. You can unmute yourself. Open your chat and solve the remaining one. We have six minutes to do that. So by 4.30, we'll continue. Six minutes maximum.
Six minutes, please. Uh, five minutes remaining. Post your answer on the chat box. Remember to use the chart for concrete pipe, which is 1.0. It has a higher, it has a higher factor. Three more minutes. Only one answer. I don't have access to the materials. Uh -uh. Nura. Okay, let me update, upload the, I don't know, upload it there. The chat. Um, chat, chat, chat. Go to the chat box now. Where is it? Where do we do it? I'm not seeing the upload. Two more minutes. So um, Lula, the chat is in the chat box now. The, the nomograph is in the chat box. The nomograph for concrete pipe. There are three of them. Online, you can get a lot of them. You can get other charts. But any charts that you get, any charts that you, the chat is in the chat box now. Any chart that you, you, you are choosing will tell you how to use it or the value to, to do it.
So we, we are starting again. We will need to overshoot, overshoot by a few minutes. So those of us who have not done it, um, I just need one more person to, to do it. Nura, I've sent you the material via chat. Can you just download it? Catchment F, catchment H, and catchment D. What are their respective pipe sizes? So this is 15.67. 15.67 for D. And why is D, why is the flow high? Well, the flow is high because if you look at D, D is bordering three catchments. This is D. So it means catchment C has come, catchment A and catchment B. All of them are entering into D. So, so 15.67 against 2.5 based on our chart, but 0.25% globally. So 15 is here. So 15 against 2.5. OK, it's in between here. And that will be 200 mm pipe. Somebody says you got 175. I commend you, that is good. But based on design principle, you choose 200. But later, I will show you something, I don't want to confuse us. If you choose 200, it means the new discharge is about 20, no more 15. Just take note of that. It means the new discharge for when, you, when, when we got 175 and we, choose, we chose 200, sorry. If you read, if you take the, the, if you take it to, if you take it to 200 and take it down, you find out that you're getting 20. So this 20 now is your new discharge. So this is what we need. It's also like civil engineers. You know, when you do your design, there is required provided. Your first point required is Y12 at 200 mm spacing. Provided Y16 at 150 mm spacing, it's just to increase the value increase the safety factor. So take note of that. So if you back calculate this 20, you might, you might find out that your population equivalent must have increased, meaning that the lifespan of that project has also increased. So when you size your system very well, you are increasing the lifespan. That's why some design that were done by the British in places like Lagos and Ibadan, you find out that up to now, some of them are still working. And all these old places where they do uh, uh, good design, you find out that they are still working. Okay, because when they did it, they foresee population explosion in some cases, and they made, made adequate um, adequate, uh, adequate uh, provision for that. So the next one is. Catchment F or pipe F, which is 23.5 liters per second. As expected, that one will be, will be a bit massive. So 23.5, so somewhere here. Somewhere here. So I go up. Uh, what's the slope? This is where we are. The slope is two. I go to my charts. This is two. Twenty against two. Twenty three. Is in between 200 and 250, so we we'll choose 250. So the value for that one is 250. See, someone of us got it, or two, or two persons got it. Uh, 
Finally, the biggest pipe carrying 30 liters per second, expected to conduct 30 liters per second. This is 30. Slope is 1.7 or let's say 2. 30. Against thirty against two. Somewhere here is three hundred mm pipe. But listen to me. Let's be careful. In practical sense, once this thing is too close to two fifty. It might be preferable to use 250. Just take notes. But for now, let's maintain and say 300. Remember, over designing is a cost burden on your clients. Don't forget that. So this one I'm writing 300 now. 250 can also serve it because the thing is so close. It's so close that as a as a as a consultant, you can risk it. You can based on all the computation you have done, you can say okay, 250 will serve because it's too close to it's too close to 250 to say it's going to be 300. So it means the biggest pipe size in this place is 300 mm. Now let me let me do something. Let me let me let me just do something. You know they told us that um, the population density is 100 100 capita per hectare, and the total population. The total hectare is about 75 hectare. So that means the population equivalent is 100, am I right? Times 75. It means that this, this design we're doing is for 7,500 people. So in a city where there is 7,500 people, the biggest pipe size in the network will be around 300 to 50. I mean, I think 250 is fair. Any question? Can you unmute yourself and ask questions? Or I'll assume everything is well understood and um, well comprehended. Any question? Hello? Any yeah. question? Hello? Yeah, Hello? Hear you. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Uh, please, I'm asking, this uh, Excel sheet that you just worked on, is it possible for you to send it to each person? It's not even whether it's possible. I'm going to send it now. Let me close it and send it now. Uh -huh. so that, and then uh -huh. we, we can use it to work for the second part. You know, we are doing C1 now. So this is almost half of the class. We are entering storm water oh. now. So let me close okay. it and send to everybody now so that we will okay. continue. While the final okay. one will also be sent to everybody. So let me save it. Is, it, is it through WhatsApp you are sending it? Or? Through our chat box. There's a chat box okay, I, I in this in Zoom. OK, oh. OK, through Zoom. Okay. This Zoom chat box. Okay, okay. So let me send it to us so that you can go through it and um, um excuse me. I can hear you, sir. You know the last calculation you did, you got seven thousand five hundred. I, I was trying to get the formula before you now ended it. I, I wasn't sure actually. No, what I what they, they gave us, they said that the population density. They gave yes. they, didn't, they didn't tell us number of persons because the okay. place is not on butte area. That is what we okay. call land use, land use. So they said that the density yes. they expect is 100 persons, 100 capita per hectare. Yes. And the total hectare is 75. Yes. So if you have 100 oh. per hectare, therefore in 75 hectares, it will be 75 times 100, which is 500 yes. people. So that's like a benchmark number of people are expected to live there. It's good that we understand oh. this thing. If you're a planner, you're an infrastructure designer. 
These are the things yes. that you go and do investigation for. These are the things that will take you to FCDA, that will take you to go, uh, Lagos, Lagos State Government, blah, 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 blah. For you to get all this value and said, this area of Lagos is designed for this. I tell people that's why in Abuja, it's not everywhere you go, you do fast, you can't do 10 story building everywhere. In Abuja, you can't even build Gunga. Yes. So there must be mixed density, high density area, low density area. So you must know all these things. Okay. So if they are Thank designing you. a place for okay, if they are designing a place for medium, medium, medium density, if you go to development control to get a drawing, build and approve, they don't approve it. They'll tell you this place is meant for eight families, it's meant for four families. When the when 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 the things are good, not now that everything has been bastardized and abused. But I know in, in developed countries, all these things still work. You don't come to a place, you don't, you don't come to my village and build four story building. You don't try, you don't do that nonsense because the planners of my city have already considered the service pressure, have considered the location of the upper reservoir. That if you build your four story building, you might not see water in your house because my, our reservoir is no more than three story building. That's by the way. So let me save this work. I have to close it. If not, it's not upload. Oh, I send it here. So can we go to our, our chat box now and download it? Everybody download it so that we can use, we can now work together. Download it in your system and open it. Go to the chat box. This Excel sheet I have, I've downloaded, I've uploaded it. Okay, now we are done with this um, CWA network design. So what I want us to do is, um, in your ex are, are we open it? Have we all opened it? If you go to your Excel, my, mine is not doing because I have a fault. But if you go here, just right click on this uh, tab. You say move or copy. Then you say move. You, you, you click you click you click on create a copy and new workbook i'll click okay okay i don't want it to be on the new workbook Sorry. So, okay. Um, this is what I want to do. I want to copy the whole of this. I want to copy the whole of this into a new workbook. Control C. I'll click on a new workbook. Control V. And I'll name this one Stormwater. Storm network. Okay. 
Any questions so far? So I'll come here and I'll delete the whole of this. I'll just leave this. Oh no, sorry. I'll first delete this to Please follow me. Then I'll delete this one. So please, can you modify your the Excel to look like this? So in this case, I'll just put here runoff. I also say flow. Okay, let me leave the flow or runoff. Mm -hmm. Please follow me, follow me, just do what I'm doing. Do, do what, follow me. So what we have done so far, we have done up to this point. Up to this point. Here you have wastewater. So we are done with wastewater, we see what. So we're gonna do storm water now. We're doing storm water. We're entering storm water now. So the next thing we introduce now will be the Coefficient of runoff. I did not see the Excel in the chart. I'll put it in the chart again. I, I don't think, it, okay, let me put it in the chart. Yeah, to enter. Come to this chart, you'll see it. Because I, I, if I want to give it to you, I have to maybe. It's here, come to the chart, you'll see it. Scroll up, if you have to, scroll up. So the next thing we're gonna do here now is to, Introduce the coefficient of runoff. So that place will have units, units something. You need discharge or so. Uh, you need discharge now. We change to um, runoff coefficient. Here, I'm supposed to insert the symbol for that. But well, let me see if I can see it. Insert symbol. I'll look for the symbol for runoff. It's going to take me a while, but it's there. I can't find it, but let me use this one. So 
So the runoff coefficient we have was 0 0.37. Remember, we calculated yesterday. So I'll come here and say 0 0.37. And I'll push it down. OK? Uh -huh. So the next chart now will be, will now be the area times the runoff, the effective area. So here now will be effective area. Hmm? Effective area is now the real area that's contributing to runoff. And how do you get the real area contributing to runoff? It is by, by calculating the this total area, this area now, multiply by the runoff coefficient, which is now equal to runoff coefficient multiply by the area summed. So this is now the effective area. Mm -hmm. This thing has no units. Remember, so if you multiply this by this, multiply this by this, it will give you this. So this is not the area contributed to the runoff. So the next thing we now do is we now um, we now say unit rain intensity. The next thing will now be rain intensity, and is in millimeter per hour. Mm -hmm. And it's also a function of D and N. Okay. So that rain intensity is what you now go and read off in the charts. The rain intensity is which city you keep it. Then you go to 10 minutes and uh, read it off against the return period. So what you do is you now go to Nigerian Code of Practice. Click on Nigerian Code of Practice. So in Nigerian Code of Practice now, Nigerian Code of Practice, you open it with PDF. So you now look for the city of your choice. Hmm? So let's say we are using BIDA. BIDA, for example. You we'll go to BIDA, and let's say from yesterday, we are designing for a rural area, remember? Let's go back to our design principle, our design parameters, our takeoff sheets. Our takeoff sheet says, the duration of the rain of the storm is 10 minutes and it's a rural area. I don't know if, if that's clear enough. So this is it. Hmm? 10 minutes, rural areas. So we now go to our bidder. The horizontal is the time. Okay. We choose 10 minutes. And the return period is say, oh, the return period is one year. The, the precipitation, the storm events, or rain intensity, or the maximum probable flood, if I want to speak grammar, is now 90. If we take it up to Two years, it will be giving us 120, and so on and so forth. So, but for us to have the same value as we have in this chart, I'm going to use what they use here. So, I'm going to use 126. I'm going to assume that the rain intensity is 126.3. Or I can choose my, okay, okay, what I'll do is, um, I'm thinking whether I should choose my own value. 
I will just choose what they choose here. Hmm? Let me choose what I choose here because in our chart, they are chart of many cities. So when you are doing revision, you might actually forget which city. So let me just choose the one they have here. So let's say we read the chart and we got 126.3. That's just what I want to say. Let's say we've read the chart and we got 126.3. If you come down here, you see that there's something different from 126.3. They are getting something smaller than that. This number that's smaller than that is that they moved away from 10 minutes and they move into 11 minutes, 12 minutes. I told you that the duration is usually between 10 minutes and 15 minutes. So while they are moving towards 15 minutes, the value came down a bit. So what do we do now? So the prestation now is one to six. Let's say we read our charts and we go one to six point three. And for Bida, for two years in Bida, we got it one to one twenty. If this is what we've gotten, we now make sure it's uniform. Therefore, the discharge will now be this area multiplied by a hectare. This is now the discharge. Good question. Our Q is 126.3. We're no longer using Q now, we're not using I, rain intensity. That's a good question. It's now I. It means the Q is now the rainfall because we are designing storm. So it is storm that is producing the water. It's rain, it's the sky, it's the cloud. Before it was the human inhabitants that were producing the huge water. But now it is, the, it is the weather, weather activity. Yes, rain intensity is our Q now. That's it. Just like Q, small Q there was the wastewater flow, the catchment. Now it is the rain intensity, the catchment. So the unit is still in liter per second per, per, per hectare. That's a good question. Okay, so rain intensity. So this place is now. Q, okay, so I don't get confused. So this becomes I. Or C, wait, I. Hmm? Well, this place is already. C. Dot A. So C dot A is here. That's why I now multiply this with this. So because I is this one. So here now is already C dot A because we did this one is this times this, this times this, this times this, this times this. That's how it came about this. So if you now multiply by this one. Any question? So now, um, can somebody help me determine the pipe sizes, please, please? 
So that, let me be convinced you are following me. Let me do the first one. The first one is 730. Uh, but there is something we do. Um, there's something we do. Let me just do it here almost immediately. Before you do this, mm -hmm. you multiply the, you multiply with another safety factor. Don't be confused, please. What I'm about doing, I don't want you to confuse us. Eh? But that's what we do in design because we don't want it to surcharge. So that thing is that we'll simply say all the value here divided by 0 0.9. Somebody asked me, where is 0 0.9? That 0 0.9 is to make sure that only 90% of the pipe is being used. Yeah, divide by 0 0.9. Please, this, this, this is an additional safety factor. So what I'll just do is to say equal to this, divide 0 0.9. Point nine. Hmm? So this this is not our final Q. The difference between this one and this one is that we added, we we increase the safety factor for this one. That's just it. Well, that is zero point nine. Remember what I told us yesterday, as an engineer, if somebody gives you a bill or a house to build or whatever to cost, after costing it, you usually don't give that person the exact value you got. Sometimes you multiply by 1.2. So in this case, we're multiplying by 1.1. It's just for you to have Esther. And I told us the meaning of that is that on no, you are giving allowance on top of the pipe. Somebody says, so as to make it an open channel. Mm, yeah, something like that. Not really open channel per se, but to give allowance for surcharge, you know, you are, you, are, you, are, you are in line. You know, if you lay a concrete pipe underground, if the pipe surcharge, it might break. It might break. It, concrete pipes must not come under pressure. Concrete pipes must not come under pressure. So all these BB pipes that you see, if the water fools and the water is flowing under pressure, any slight water hammer, it will be devastating. What only helps those pipes is that because they're buried on the ground, the overboarding pressure is so much that sometimes there's no room for crushing, for water hammer to have a sheer effect on the wall. Okay, Umar, Umar God bless you. He said, is to allow free surcharge. Perfect. Me, I'm trying to, to, to speak to Enchi, but I'm happy that two people in this class already understood while we're doing this. So that all these things are all that is all, is, is all about following the standards. It's all about standards. So they say it's a lie to free, to, to free surcharge and that's perfect. Okay. Uh, so let's continue. So now I want to give us challenges now. Can we size these pipes now? Can we size the pipes now? Or do you want me to size one, you size the other ones? I hope everything we've done here is understood. So here, I'll just double click here and say Storm. Storm design. Okay. What design? <laughs> so later, you can modify your, you can modify it and make it look big. I put your company logo. Okay. You can modify it, make it look big, put your company logo, and then. Where your money? No need for this again. I don't spoil this thing. Even these numbers here is not necessary, but let me leave it. So later you can modify this thing, make it look good, make it look beautiful. So when you are presenting it, somebody will know yes. This consultant, look on that and I will do now. Watch me, and that I'm gonna do is that. I'm gonna click here now and make it. Be, be solving, be solving, be solving. Let's just want to see my exact score. Um, I'll come here, I'll say alignment. I'll say wrap test. 
see you have that one there so i'll just click format painter and do this one no click on this one okay to not do it because uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this one is not part of um, the training, but it's just good that we make it look good, just to make it look good, look good, so that So on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So mm. so what's the meta? Who is the first? Who is the first? What's the diameter of A? What's the diameter of B? What's the diameter of C? What's the diameter of one of them? If you get the diameter of A, you can use it for B. You can use it for C. You can use it for D. You can use the same diameter for G. So this is what happened in design. If you get two reference values, you just look for people. You say, please, I don't have the chart for cities. What do you mean by that? No, I've already uploaded the chart. This is the chart you need now. For this is the chart. This is the chart you need. Should I upload it again? So what's the pipe size? So I've uploaded it. Go to the chat and have it, Isaac. Go to the chat box and have the chat. So it's one one seven hundred eight hundred nine hundred one thousand eight hundred is here against five. Against five. It's giving me seven hundred. Too close to 700 for me to say it, you choose 800. So I choose 700. So the 
next one is 1,000 cubic meter. This one is 1,000. Again, 3.3%. Okay, sorry. This is 1,000, 1,095. This is 1, 5. This is 1, 250. So 1,095 is just one, one bar, one line after 1,000. Against 3.3. It's giving me 800. Seven thirty. So this is it. Seven thirty is somewhere here. And the slope. Is where we are. Flow, the runoff flow is this. Again, slope of It's still around 700, still. A little bit above 700, I can say 750. Just use wisdom. So we are something like 750, so. But it can be, it can be still 700. So please, class, let's, we, we, let's do the remaining ones. Give me the value for the remaining one. Though who didn't do it last time? Please, attempt to do it. And I'm giving us four minutes. To do it. So 520 will resume again. Use four minutes and read off this. I just want you to understand how to read. If you attended this class, can you, you can't read that chart? Then I'm afraid um, you didn't get the value for your money. Okay, so you have to understand how to use that chart. In fact, that chart is your magic one. It's something a lot of people you can download some online. I, I was able to get some online, but you're going to pass through for you to download it and then know, understand how to use it. So in three minutes' time. What is the value for catchment D? What is what the value for E? What is the value for F? And so on and so forth. So, so please, can we do that right away? Please, can we do it right away? We have three minutes only. Thank you.
אוקיי. Hello, any question? I have two questions, three answers, and all of them are so. Akinola said, Are we to use the slope? Use the same slope now. What we've been doing? I only say just go to the chat and read off. I've done three. So, what's the value for this 2000? I expect it to be me. Omar, you failed. There's no way 2000. A flow of 2,000, a flow of 730 liters per second will be 700, and a flow of 2,000 liters per second will also be 700. It's not possible. So who again? You say I can't hear you from my side. Uh, log out and log in again. That may, that may be the problem. We didn't log in with your computer audio. You didn't log in with your computer audio, Loretta. Then please, can we? Can we, can we, can everybody just attempt this? Okay, 5G. Yeah, of course, 5G is 700, yeah. That's in general sense. Even pipe, uh, pipe E also. It can be off the chart. Check again. But F is um, 3,800. Okay, let me check now. Okay. Okay, let me check. Three thousand. This is three thousand. See now, it didn't, it didn't go off. Okay, three thousand against what percent? Okay, against 2%. That means, um, good, that's a good question. What you do is you choose the closest percentage you have, and then you can you use, that's why we would say modified. Maybe by tomorrow we'll look at um, how you can modify some things. When you get things like this, okay, this is at 17, as 1.7 per slope. And if you go to our chart, for instance, the minimum slope for this is, um, six percent. So, and that six percent is one point two hundred. So I can comfortably say that this one will be one point three hundred. Without modifying, e is nine hundred. So you choose seven hundred. E e e. Why is it nine hundred? It can't be nine hundred now because this one is eight one one is seven hundred. So a low a lower flow can be more than it unless. It can't be, it's not possible, sir. Check again. Is someone that is the right answer? Because the two slopes are almost the same. So if this, if 800 discharge can be accommodated by 700. We're together. So can we, can I get a response? So 2000, so this one now is one, 300. For now, based on empirical, because the minimum I can get there is one, two, one. Um, so 3000, let's do the other ones first. 3000, this is 3000. 3000 against 2%. E is two against 770. This is 770 somewhere. 700, 800, 900, 1000. So 770 is, is around here at two percent. Oh. Okay, you're right. You're right, 900. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How come this one at 5%? Yeah, the sense in it. That means uh, catchment E is like a flat slope. Catchment E is almost like a flat catchment. It's possible, sir, because look at it. So that, that means this place is upper. Mm -hmm. This place is almost flat. While here is sloping. So Y700 can take care of this place at the same discharge. Not only 900 can take care of this place because this place is almost flat. Look at the slope is 20 to 500. Why this one is the slope is one to 200. So that makes a lot of sense. And there's engineering sense in it. So the slope, the more slopey the ground is, the smaller the pipe size required. So while we are providing 700 mm pipe for, for catchment A, we're providing catchment E with 900 mm pipe. Even though the two catchments almost have the same discharge. Look at the shape. But because of the terrain, we are providing a smaller slope to it. So this one is 3,000 now. What do we do? We go to our chart again. 3,000 against 2%. So 3,000. Three thousand against two percent, just at the boundary. So we can increase it to four percent. Okay, and this is one thousand two hundred. G eight hundred, one two hundred. So this one I'm getting one two hundred. G, 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 3.3%, 730. G, 3.3% and 730. G, 730 is between this and this. At 3.3%. No. Yeah, it's about 750, but it's not up to 800. If I'm to change it to 800, that means I'll change the other one to 800 too. Which, which, which is, if I'm to change this to 800, that means this one too should be 800. That's what it means. Or this one too should be 800. So it's an empirical thing. So two designers cannot get the same answer. Okay, they usually have different slope. Yeah, it could be possible, but 800 is 75. From what I'm seeing, it's closer to 700. It's closer to 700 to 800 because you don't know the, the price, the cost of material. You can, 800 is okay, it's perfect. But you also have to balance your, your engineering safety design against cost. Okay? But generally, 800 is preferable. I mean, Seth, if you, if you, get, if you, have, if you got 700 in your design, you can provide 800. It's good. It's good, it's better. So this one is 3.3% and this one is 3.3%. So there's no difference now. So whatever I write here is what I'll write here. So this one now, two, the last one now, 2000 will be, 2,000 against what? 2,000 against 2.5. 2,000 against 2.5. So this 2,000 now against 2.5. It's giving me 1.1 or I stand to be corrected. It's too close to 1.1 to say it's 1.2.
So that is that. And the outage. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. For the one that that's for H now, we have 1,305 diameter. Yeah. What is guiding the extra hundred, which is beyond the chart? Yeah, I, I'm using my I'm using my engineering sense to add some safety to the 1,200 because it's obviously above 1,200. Okay, that means I should look for a modified chart. That is better than this one, or add some safety measure. Now we are about 3,800. This is 3,800 somewhere here. Okay. So the minimum slope is 5%. Unless I'm going to dig that place and make sure that the slope is 5%. You know what I mean? Unless I'm going to provide the slope of this magnitude there before 1,200. But because the slope is slower, I think the value will increase because this is something about um, the higher this is inversely proportional flow. Or this that is where it's coming from. I don't know if I'm right. If you if you if you understand what I mean, you understand. So this is one thousand two hundred. So it means what this chart is telling you is that what this chart is telling you is that any dimension that is at this this charge. A slope of two is empirical, doesn't perfectly fit in. It is now you, the engineer, that use your description and justify it because the only slope that can accommodate this number G. Yeah, no, not number G. Which one are we referring to now? Yeah, number H is if this slope, unless you now I will now come and change this slope to say four percent. And then that means if they go to the site, they will dig. They will, you know what I mean now? They will, they will, dig, they will dig deeper so that the, the pipe can lay to that slope. But if the slope is fixed, then the only option I have is to increase the pipe size. Because when you lay a pipe that is almost flat, the pipe size will increase. When the pipe is sloping, the pipe size will reduce. Any other question? Okay, a good question. Well, I have not explored it. I have not explored it, but I know that there, there, there could be. You know, one thing that I know that's happening these days is that most companies will develop their own uh, uh, algorithm to determine these pipe sizes. Um, I think yesterday or today, I was trying to Google and to see how to get other pipe charts other than the one I've been using to, for my training. I know in the, in the course of going to session, I can I, I got one, but I can't find where I, I, I saved it. I wanted to also use it to demonstrate to us. Um, if all of us can be patient, I will, I will find where I kept it. I know I got one. I got one, and I put it in water, in my water chart. Yeah, I think it's in water. Let me check. No, I can't find where I put it. I know I downloaded one. Pipe sizing table, yeah. Let me just demonstrate something to us. I downloaded this yesterday night. And I use it to make comparison with what I have. And it was falling in line. Look at it. This is a chart I downloaded online. 
but it was it, it was they calibrated it in feet of what the, the frictional loss is in feet of water per hundred foot, and then the flow is gallon per minute. Mm -hmm. Gallon per minute to convert. Um, let's just do some mathematics. Let me just okay. Let me even see. Yeah, let, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. This one, this one has discharge that might be help. So listen, uh, Loretta, are you with me? So this um, 3,800 um, liter per seconds, if you want to convert it to gallon per minute, um, I think you divide by 15. We'll sort it, we'll learn something now. Just hold on. Just hold on. Convert gallon per minute, no, convert the yeah, same thing. Gallon convert per minute to liter per seconds. So if you're converting gallon per minute, we can say one US gallon is equal to this. To convert gallon per minute to liter per seconds, multiply the gallon per minute value by this. So that means if you want to convert um, to liter per seconds, So we just multiply by five, 15,000. Mm -hmm. Just hold on, by 15. So that value now, let's hold on, let's hold on. Let's learn something. I just want to you know, show us how we can also, outside this lesson. Okay, this calculator is on already. So it's open multiple times. So now we are, we are talking about um, 3,800. Liter per seconds. Mm -hmm. Multiply by fifteen to give you. Oh, sorry, so I can use this chart. You know what I'm multiplying by fifteen is for us to be able to use this chart, okay? Because the chart is calibrated in liter in gallons per minute. So you multiply by fifteen. Fifty-seven gallons per minute. That's what it is. Fifty-seven gallons per minute. So this chart cannot use it. This chart can only accommodate something within 20,000 gallons per minute. Are we together? So I can't use this chart anyway. If not, and this chart, the maximum, the maximum pipe size is 24 inches. What is 24 inches in, um, what is 24 inches? One inch inches is 25 mm. So 24 inches. Yeah. 24 inches is equal to multiply by 25. 600. So this chart can only be designed up to 600. Oh, this is more. So I'll look for another chart. But unfortunately, I might not look for it today. Um, hmm. I'm not looking for it today, but um, let it be something we can do. Chart for storm design. There's always one. You can you can when you Google, you see charts. You see charts for storm design images. Okay. So I type sizing. Custom design. Good. So five sizing custom design. We're looking for the one that can take. I think most times when it gets to that value, you use formulas. You use formulas to to this because it's, it's beyond. Uh, and what, what we say, we say that at that point, the chart becomes it's become you use empirical you know everything has its limits we in engineering we in civil engineering what we are doing our column, column sizing uh beam sizing there is a there is a kind of beam you want to design it's not more in the chart again if you want to design a beam that has a drop down of two meters gentlemen and has a span of 20 meters there's no chart in the world that will give you that you use your you use you use, you use manual method to do it all these are uh, uh, depth length ratio. 
you know, there's a, there's a limit to everything. So this chart I'm using is only accurate when your pipe size is no more than 1.2. Once your pipe size is beyond 1.2, then this chart is not liable for mistake. But that does not mean that you, as the engineer, cannot design it. You can still design it, but you justify it, just like I did mine now. That because I didn't see a slope of 5%, I, this is a slope of 2%, but I saw a slope of 5%. I justify it to say the 1.3 meter diameter pipe can take it. So I think that is what we do in engineering. When you reach a limit of a thing, you now use empirical value. So this one is, uh, is another thing. This one is talking about, uh, those are our charts for California. You see, you see California own those charts I gave you. They, those things, those manual, th those things in uh, highway design manual. This is what they're having for California. So you see, California is a big city. California is a, like a country. So you don't expect them to give you only one chart. So depending on the region where you are, you use the um, the equivalent chart. You know, the, they are they are more discretized. They have different. Uh, they have money after all to install giving station here and there. Um, I think um, um, spreadsheets, stone based sizing, in spreadsheets. You'll find something. You'll find something. But unfortunately, I can't. Um, we can't be doing it while on this train. So um, let me go back to the charts again. Spreadsheet. Are you serious? Let me see what they have. It could, be a it could just be a template, which I told you that if you go online, you see a lot of templates. But the good thing that we are able to develop our own here and now, and it was cool. Since we use the same data, can we compare the sizes with what we have? You mean for the new charts? Yeah, you can do that. But remember, is it will be for Siwa. It can't be for storm water because this one has a limit of 600. And the minimum pipe size for a storm is already 700. So this chart is useless for a storm. This chart is useless for a storm, but you can use it for the Siwa. I already used it anyway, and I, I saw similarities in terms of the slope and everything. Hmm? I can send it to you. Which I'm talking about the material we're working on. I'm sorry, I can't. Answer. I can't understand your question, please. You can you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Unmute and ask the question. Yeah, you know we're using a chart, uh, mm -hmm. like a case study. Mm -hmm. And we use a 120, 126.3 as our rain intensity. Yeah. So they should have gotten a pipe size for those. Can mm -hmm. we compare what we have now with what is in the material you're using for us? I still don't get it. This material we're having, this, this, I don't know if this is what you mean. This, this rain intensity, this for bidder. We no, got 120. We didn't, we didn't use bidder. We use what is in the uh, material you gave us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's go. No, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. Look at it. Look at it. This is what you mean. Yeah. 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 That's what yeah, I look mean. At it. It's the same thing. No, it's the same thing. But they have pipe size of 1,600. Where is it? For F. Yeah. F. They, for F. And what did you get? 1,200. No, but let's look at the value they got. See the value they got, 3,600. Okay, this is your maximum value. Mm. Okay, okay, I understand. Um, mm, okay. You know, we use 126 as flats, yeah. but they did, so at some point they increased it. 
They reduced it, sorry. Hello? Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, we, use, one, we, use, we use 126. Yes. All true. But here, they reduced it to 120. And uh, I, I, I was about to explain that. In this place, what they did was that they measured the travel time, what we were discussing yesterday. And they found out that the travel time, 10 minutes, is not enough. Remember, I told us, I have always said is that the rainfall duration will be between 10 minutes and 15 minutes. So when they measured the travel time, they got something around 11.7 minutes. So they read it off from the charts. So it didn't give them 126 anymore. It gave them 120. And let me explain what, what that means. For instance, here, gentlemen, this is a bidder. Mm -hmm. If I use a 10 minutes rain, this is 10 minutes rain. This is 15 minutes rain. 10 minutes rain for one year return period will give me about 95. 15 minutes rain is giving me 80. So, but what I did here for the purpose of learning, I just use uniform value of one, two, six, or two. So why they use that 11.7 uh, is that they came here and they calculated that before between this point to get to this point, the water will arrive within 10 minutes. From this point to this point, to arrive within 10 minutes. But within this A catchment to H catchment, it will take more than 10 minutes. Remember what we discussed yesterday? Maximum discharge can only occur when every area of the catchment is contributing to runoff. So if you multiply, if you add the distance of this channel eh, and divide it by the velocity, and assume velocity of two, you find out that the travel time is more than 10 minutes. So when you now go to your charts, you're not going to use 10 minutes. You're going to use 12 minutes. That, that's 11.7 anyway. So that's what they used. So, um, in this chart, they didn't get it at 800. Rather, they got, they got um, here, they got um, 3,358. Now, there's another thing now that you also need to understand in this chart. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. they, now, they now did what they call combined system. We don't do, com this is, what we did was a separate system. We did storm separate. Siwa separate, but in this place, they did storm. Here, yeah, look at their storm. Their Siwa, sorry, thirty point. The, the highest value is thirty point something, which we did. They now did their runoff. This one, they now combine the two. So the value we have here, column number fourteen, is this column thirteen plus column six. Column this plus this. So combined system is a system whereby the storm water and the sewer will use one pipe. So what they do is that when it's not raining, dry weather flow will flow in. Once it starts raining, they will shut down. Um, uh, when it starts raining and intensity increases, they will use, there's a mechanical device they use to make sure that the two flows can flow at the same time, but it will not go to open stream. It will first go to a minimum treatment plant. Hello. Hello. I can't hear anybody here. Nobody feel anything. Hello. Is is from your end, sir? Hello. I suspect it's from your end. We can hear you. Okay. It's from your end, sir. So what I'm saying in essence is that here now what they now did was they designed we designed the runoff. This is the runoff. This is the column for the runoff. And the maximum value is 3,358. Eh? And we now did a combine, which is now column, yeah, which is now column 18. Eh? Column 18, and they are getting 4,000. 484. So that's why you didn't see uh, 1,800. Then we didn't see 1,600 in our own. The 1,600 in our own, I did the 1,300. 
That means I need to I need to upscale it. I need to add more safety fa fa factor to it. So it's 3,600. So that means here that I use empirical factor that to say 1,300. What they use here is actually around 1,600. But I can put my own at 1,500 because I, I didn't get the value there. So I, 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 I was, um, at what point do we use nomogram 4.0? There's no nomogram 4.0. That, that would be a very rough. Do you have nomogram 4.0 you can send to me, sir? That would be a very rough concrete. That would be a very rough concrete, very rough concrete, or some kind of channel as, that has a higher frictional factor. I don't have nomogram 4.0. Okay, 0 0.4 is ductile iron. Ductile iron. Then PVC is 0.1. So back to this chart, because that's this is where we're going to end today. So what they did here, just watch everything we did now. So we've done this, and we got this our value. And from this value, we got our pipe sizes. Then what they just did here was to repeat the travel time. This is the travel time. And the travel time is the total distance over the time. Remember, velocity is distance over time. So if you make time the subject of the formula, you have distance over velocity. And assume velocity is two. So this travel time is less than 600. 600 is the takeoff point, it's the threshold. So anyone that is less than 600, we use the one for 600. This 10 here simply represents 10 minutes and 600, that's what it means. Then this is the value we read from the charts. They multiply this value by the reduced area. You will be getting these values. Then you aggregate these values. Here, this is the aggregate. So from here now, you get your pipe size. So this is the length, which we've already taken up. This is the slope, which you have taken it up. So the next thing is to divide this value by 0 0.9. Look at it. You divide it by 0 0.9 to give you 820. Oh, give us 811. And 811, they use 800. It's okay. So you can see that these people, they used the, they, they, they were adding like 100, 100 in what we got. Because if you remember my chart, when I use my chart, okay, which is this is a good, this is a good question. When I use my charts for 811, watch me now. This is 811. I wrote 700 and they wrote 800. So why what happened? Let's go back to the chart. 811 is somewhere here. And the slope is 5%. It's 5 per meter. So what do we do? So what we now do is we go to, this is 800. I'll go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, until I go to somewhere 5%, somewhere here. Mm -hmm. OK, I think I'm the one wrong. You see where I am? I'm wrong. It is falling between 700 and 800. Please, somebody should prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. 800 is actually 800. That 811 is actually 800 because look at where it's falling. It's falling between 700 and 800. So why should I choose 700? So this one should be 800. Are we together? Please, any, any confusion, any, any question? So for tomorrow's class, um, we're just gonna conclude what we started by, I'm gonna introduce you guys to softwares that you can use. It's a very simple thing, it's not a difficult thing. I think I can just do that in one hour. Yes, yeah, um, yes, about that. So this one's already 900, sir. So this other one, 730, just check it very well at uh, 0 0.33, 730, this 800. So 730 is between this and this. Yeah, you're right, 800. I was a bit conservative.
Yeah, I was a bit conservative. So, um, here mm, is um, from this now, we multiply by 0 0.9 to get this, and then these are diameter. So, you can ignore this one, these ones are now, are now checks. Mm -hmm. These checks are what we call um, pipe full and pipe. Um, not full. Um, how does that work? How it works, I, I can say ignore it. That, that, that one is academic. But to demonstrate it for some of us is this. You know, now I got, we got 700. We got 730. And it's falling in between two lines. If you take it to the line and come down, you get a new discharge. So you now do the new discharge over the old discharge, it will give you a value that is between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. So that's like a check. So in other words, if you design your system, you can now, because you didn't get an exact value, you can now get the next higher value and get the corresponding discharge. You now do a check to say whether it's excessive or it's not excessive by doing the original over the actual. If you do, that, so that is what um, this place is showing you. Here, the old discharge over the new discharge. This place is getting 0 0.8. Okay, this is 0 0.7. So all of them are all in line because if this value is less than 0 0.5, it means you have over, over designed. If it's less, if it's between 0 0.7 and 0 0.9, you are in order. If it's more than 0 0.9, you are under this. No, if it's less than 0 0.7, you are under designing. If it's if it is above 0 0.9, you are over designing. So that is what that means. These other ones, as I said, are just um wet water flow, flow time, and all this. This one are just check, but your value, your exercise stops at the pipe sizes. This other one are just like check. These are like check. So when you check this and this, eh, you got 738. The actual is now um, 754. So you now do 738 over 754. It will give you 0 0.88. 0 0.88 becomes your partial fill. So, but for now, for a practical consultant angle, your design stops at the diameter. And that's exactly what we have here. And I save it. So let me quickly um, save this work and send it to us um, so that we can download it. And uh, that will be the end of the class for today. So, so those of us are still around. Um, So we can go to the chat box and download all sheets. Any sheets? Any question? Any rush of paper we need to download? We have, have given us everything. Any question? Any question? So I'm going to end the class today. Um, tomorrow class will start by 3 p.m. Or we'll just take, we'll close on time. We'll close maybe before five, just for us to introduce you to software 
Um, what the software does basically is just to show you, show you how you can transform these things into a software. But believe me, gentlemen, from my experience, this is the real design. Software is just for you to draw diagrams and then to give you the total um, flow characteristics. But stormwater and sewer is best done by manual design. But swim application or a civil SSA to we'll introduce to you tomorrow. We'll show you how it works. Uh, if you uh, if you have AutoCAD Civil 3D, it's okay. But if you don't have it, you can download the swim. So to download the swim, um, how do you download it? Just go to your Google. Go to Google and type um, swim. Look at it. You, you go to their website, epa.gov, you type swim. It'll be there. So you go down. This one was uploaded on 20th of um, You go down, like two megabytes. So just click on this one. Swim 5.0. So just click on it. And there you go. You download it to your system. Yeah. Yeah, 0 0.34 because we assume the whole catchment are uniform. What is in Wuse, what is the Koiz, what is in Keja, what is in this, in this, and this? We assume it's the same. That all of them have 60% of it is garden, 20% of it is roof, 20% of it is road. So they are uniform. So it's like a base value for all of them. So, um, gentlemen, this is after six. So uh, I want to thank us for coming. Um, thank you for your patience and. Um, if you have any question, you just ask me. Um, ask me and uh, let's continue. Please, as a last line, some of us that have not um, responded to payments, please try and do that today. It's very, very important. Very, very, very important, please. So on that note, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Um, I'll see us tomorrow as we round up the class and um, come with a lot of questions. Try and um, go through what you have studied. Uh, try and ask questions. Try and um, probe the whole course. And try and see if you can download some storm, storm water sheets and the charts. Try to see some charts. You know, I think that this exercise you are solving, they use table. But I can't lay my hands on the table they use. But me, I'm using charts. So that's why there's small, small variation. Like this one that we did now, we, they just got 800. But we are struggling with 700 until we saw that. It's actually between somewhere around 800. So there could be other charts that might be, you know, more, um, more accurate than what we have here. But the level of accuracy will not be too different from what we have. That's just the truth. So 